Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is a little bit different from the previous one. Notice that there's three loops in my circuit. I have the loop over here, a loop over here, and a loop over there. We're only asked to find the current in this branch, but with three loops, this may become a fairly difficult problem because that means we're going to end up with four equations and four unknowns, so that would be quite difficult. However, if you take a close look, you can see that if you redraw this circuit and make these two vertical ones and split this apart like that, we might find a way to reduce the circuit into a more simple form. Let's try to do that. All right, so we have a battery right over here. We have another one over here. That hasn't changed. Those two resistors up there are still the same. We'll connect this at the bottom, like so. This is our five volt battery. 10 volt battery. Here we have a 4 ohm resistor and an 8 ohm resistor. But now these two circuits right here, or these two branches, we can go ahead and draw them like this. And this becomes a 3 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor parallel to each other. And now we can take a look at these two branches and reduce those into a single branch first before we try to solve the problem using Kirchhoff's rules. And that makes things just a lot easier. When we do, we get the following circuit. So we have the single battery, we have one resistor here, we have a common or an equivalent resistor for those two. On this side, we have that resistor, there's the battery, like so. This is still the five ohm, uh, five volt battery. This is still the 10 volt battery. Here, this is a 4 ohm resistor. Here, that's an 8 ohm resistor. And for those two combined, let's see the equivalent resistance. This pen really is drying up, so let me get rid of this one and try this. So we're going to use the product of the sum. That's 3 times 6 over 3 plus 6 which is 18 over 9, which is equal to 2 ohms. So this now becomes a 2 ohm resistor. And now it looks a lot like one that we've seen before. So we can go ahead and prepare to use Kirchhoff's rules. So let's say we call this I1. Let's call this I2. And now for I3, instead of drawing the direction I3 in this direction, notice this is the positive side and the negative side of the battery, which means it's probably going to push current in this direction. My assumption is that I3 is probably from right to left in the top branch here. So let's draw it like this, call that I3. And then when we use Kirchhoff's first rule, where the sum of all the currents entering a branch point equal all the currents leaving the branch point, and if we call this branch point right there, then you can see that for equation number one, we end up with I1, and this should then be I1, I1 plus I3 equals I2. And notice that I1 is the same as the current I there, so essentially I'm trying to find the value for I1. Now I need two more equations, and I'm going to need two loops for that. So let's call this loop number one. And let's call this here loop two. Notice I indicate the direction that I'm going to take as I go around the loop and I'm going to start from the branch point right there. So for the first loop here, I go around, we have an increase from the negative to the positive end of the battery. So that's a plus five volts. That's a five volt rise. Here we have a drop, current times resistance. So that would be minus four pi one. Then we come around the corner, go to this resistor, that's a voltage drop because we go in the same direction as the current, that's minus 2 I2, and when we get back to the branch point, that adds up to zero. Now for the third equation, we use loop number two. Starting from this point, I go against the current, that's a voltage rise, two times the current, so that's 2 I2. Go around the corner, Against the current across this resistor, that's a voltage rise, that would be plus 8I3. And then we go across the battery from the positive end to the negative end, that's a minus 10 volt drop, that adds up to zero. Now the technique is usually always the same. Notice that we have an equation here. This equation tells us that I2 is equal to the sum of I1 plus I3. So I can take that and substitute that into this equation 
and substitute that into this equation. By doing so, I can eliminate I2 and I only have I1 and I3 in the two equations. So equation number two is going to be rewritten by replacing I2 by what I2 is equal to. So I end up with five minus four times I1 minus two times, and instead of I2 we write I1 plus I3 equals zero. For the third equation, again, we're going to replace I2 by what I2 is equal to. So we get two times I1 plus I3 plus eight I3 is equal, oh, now nah, we're not ready yet. We're going to minus 10 is equal to zero. So now we have these two equations with only two unknowns in it, I1 and I3, and we're going to solve those simultaneously. So simplifying this a little bit more, so equation number two becomes minus 4I1 minus 2I1 is minus 6I1. They have minus 2 times I3, that's a minus 2I3 is equal to, bring the 5 across, the other side becomes a minus 5. And the third equation, we have 2I1 and 2 times I3 plus 8 times I3, that's plus 10 times I3 is equal to, when we bring the minus 10 across, we get a positive 10. So here are the two equations in a much more simplified form. Notice that if I multiply, let's see here, if I multiply the bottom equation by 3, I will get 6i1 here. When I add that, the i1s are eliminated. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to multiply this one here by 3, a positive 3, so that my second equation does not change. I get minus 6i1 minus 2i3 is equal to minus 5. But the second equation, when I multiply both the left side and the right side by 3, I get 6i1, that's my third equation here, 6i1, uh, plus 30i3 is equal to 30. Now I can go ahead and add the two together. Of course, I'm out of room here. I'm going to add the two equations together. When I do, I end up with an equation with just one variable, just i3. So the i1s cancel out. Minus 2 plus 30 is 28i3 is equal to, when I add those together, I get a positive 25. So now we have i3 is equal to 25 divided by 28, which is equal to, let's see here, 25 divided by 28 is 0 0.893. 0 0.893 amps. So here we have the value for I3. We can now go ahead and use that to find the value for I1. Let's take this equation right here. So equation number three, that tells us that two times I1 plus 10 times I3, and I3 is equal to 0 0.893, is equal to 10. All right, this allows us to find I1, which is ultimately what we're looking for because the current I in this branch here is indeed equal to I1. So we have 2I1 plus 8.93 is equal to 10, or 2I1 is equal to 10 minus this, which is 1.07. So I1 is equal to 0 0.5, let's see, 1.07. That would be 535, five, right? So when we double that, we get 10.07, right? Okay, so that would be in amps. So now we have I1, we have I3, but how do we know we are correct? How do we know we did not make a mistake somewhere? Well, let's find I2. We can do that by saying I2 is equal to I1 plus I3. So in this case, I1 is 0 0.535 amps plus I3, which is 0 0.893 amps. So together, let's see here, that would be 5 plus 3, which is 8, 3 plus 9, which is 2, 1, 9, that's 14, 1.428 amps. That would be I2. Let's quickly check to see that is correct. So when we subtract this from that, we get 9, we get, uh, yes, 93. That is correct. 
And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to plug those three values for I1, I2, and I3 back into one of the two equations, or maybe both of them. So let's plug them back into 2 and 3 to see if that is correct. So here, we're using equation number 2, we have 5 minus 4 times I1, which is right here. So minus 4 times 0.535, and minus 2 times I2, minus 2 times I2, which is 1.428 equals, and I get a number very close to 0, which is just a slight rounding error. And then let's, let's use this equation here, 2 times I2, 1.428, plus 8 times I3, plus 8 times I3, which is 0.893, and then minus 10 equals, and I get 0. So it turns out both those equations are correct when I plug in the values for I3, I1, and I2 in there, so I'm pretty sure that what I have here is correct, and that means I have the correct value for I1, which means that this is equal to I, which is what we're looking for, in our original equation. So notice that sometimes you need to manipulate your circuit just a little bit to put it in a format that makes it a lot easier to apply Kirchhoff's rules. Don't make it too complicated. And yes, it's always a good idea that once you find the values for the three currents that you were looking for, that you plug them back into the original equations to make sure that they match. So that way you know you did not make a mistake. It's quite easy actually to make a mistake in these. And that's how it's done.